Hello, Alex and Patrick. First of all, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me today. As we are all aware, innovation has always been a cornerstone of attention. And it's exciting to hear that we are formal formalizing this with the creation of our very own innovation hub. But before we dive into the nitty gritty details, could you give our audience a brief overview? What is the innovation hub? Okay, this is the toughest question you can actually uh, ask. Basically, um, maybe I will give you a little bit of context. So when we are creating uh, solutions for our customers, um, we felt that we are falling behind. We are looking at trends, we are following trends, but you cannot give your customers the best value, the most innovative value, if you are following trends. You need to be one step ahead and actually create those trends. Be able to see what are the actual problems in the domains or verticals, like for example, retail or health or logistics you need to be there before anyone else and this was the idea behind innovation hub so we wanted to create a space that foster collaboration inside our company between our departments so non-production people and production people can together uh, collaborate on creating products and services for our customers and for ourselves and just have fun because you know innovation needs to be fun to actually be innovative. So basically, um, the Innovation Hub is a safe space when we can experiment, when we can iterate, when we can find problems and solve them, see what kind of solution is the best kind of solution uh, for, for this issue. Um, and this um, collaboration, this, this collaborative space allows us not only to leverage our and brains and our knowledge and our expertise, but also connect others together uh, to find the best uh, working solution. Patrick, uh, what did do it, you did think? Did it sound your... like a tough question at all, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, I wanted to add into that, that, that uh, because staying on top of technology and latest trends and, and actually foreseeing them is, is important. And uh, thinking that that's, uh, healthy software houses need to have a uh, whole couple of percent of resources on bench to be able to, to start uh, new projects. Uh, we also wanted to, to utilize those resources to do something meaningful. Uh, to do something that is also interesting for, for, for them and uh, matching both the requirements for, for clients, for future clients, for innovation and people available, uh, we decided to well, create a, a process or, or a utility out of it. You mentioned the process area. Could you briefly elaborate on the process behind the Innovation Hub? Of course. So first of all, everyone in company can have an idea or maybe they observe a problem in some space. Uh, maybe this is something that they observe by themselves. Maybe this is something that they see on the market and they can get that problem or that idea into our a submission form for ideas. Everyone can participate. And once a month, we are sitting together, heads of production uh, mostly, and we are um, ice scoring all of those ideas. So we are looking at impact, we are looking at effort, and we are looking at uh, out of confidence level we have that we can do this. And the best ideas, the, the most, let's say, innovative ideas, the most ideas that we are confident we can do this, we know how to do this, or we want to explore this because this aligns with our company goals, those goes into product challenges. Product challenges um, are something that are uh, probably familiar for designers and maybe even for some developers. Those are the whiteboard challenges. You are getting some problem, you have one hour or one week, depending on the challenge, to solve them. They are widely used in um, recruitment, but basically their um, initial original idea was to train product culture, was to train this muscle we have. We have a problem, let's solve it. How we can solve it? Let's leverage our business knowledge. Let's leverage our knowledge about the user and target groups and leverage technology, both as opportunity and as constraints. So in product challenge, we are following um, the framework of uh, 5Y and uh, 1H, and we are looking for um, answers on who is going to use that solution, where, in which context. So we are trying to understand the business, the market we will be working in, and the user. After the product challenge, 
uh, several um, parties, several uh, teams can take part in the product challenge. The best solution wins, and the best solution is transferred to our R&D department. And for six weeks, our developers are trying to create proof of concept because we believe that our customers expect something tangible. How many times you can get personas and Figma files? Anything can be drawn in Figma. Really, anything you desire with the new updates in Figma, we can add even more. So basically, what we are trying to change, we are trying to give our customers and ourselves something tangible. We are trying to also uh, give our uh, employees something fun, something tangible, something that will make them grow. So basically, after those six weeks, uh, creating proof of concept, tangible proof of concept, this idea can either stop because we created great proof of concept. We know if it works, if it doesn't, or it can be further developed by the company into full-fledged product. Or if our customers notice that we are uh, having this kind of proof of concept, they can, of course, approach us to, to develop it further. This is why we are creating those awesome, uh, awesome um, case studies from Product Challenge, which you can find on Uptension website in our portfolio. So you can know on what kind of technology, what kind of problems we are currently working. Yeah, and, and what's important in all of that is that we don't stop on the product challenge, as Alex has said. So this gives us, a, let's say, real life experience, because if this is a, a product, real product that, that we want to work on, if this is a proof of concept that we want to build to, to prove that this concept actually works, like in the name itself, uh, that means that, that we already have some experience in, in, with innovation and, and trying technology that is, well, cutting edge like, and either no one does it or, or very little uh, amount of people do it uh, it means that there's virtually no one on the market with the experience uh, so us doing some kind of pro proof of concept spending uh, weeks on on development having actually engineers who have uh, some some at least shallow level of experience with it is already an advantage um, and uh, it, it's just May, m means that we don't stop on the academic level, right? On just reading about it and waiting for the commercial project to start it. Because that's a lot of what, what people do, is they start a project without all the tech skills and they learn as they go, which uh, slows down the development also, uh, well, uh, spends more money, uh, some clients' money. So uh, Yeah, definitely. The client is paying We don't want for... to do it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Client is paying for the company to learn and we we want to take this cost for us. We are paying for the learning part and our customer is getting the knowledge, the know-how and so we already are uh, we are ready to start a new project. Yeah, but also when the client sees that we have some uh, real life experience with it, we did build something and uh, they they are uh, more keen to to go with with our services than than an alternative which is going to learn as they go yeah. nice you mentioned that we are absorbing the learning costs for certain solution would you say that this is the main value the innovation hub offers for external vendors i, I would say that there is more uh way more than that because uh, uh with innovation uh or so, let's say without innovation it's pretty easy to just continue building products the same way they were built uh, say a couple of, of years ago. Uh, you hear constantly about new tools, about new technology, about anything that improves your processes. But I would say that most of the teams, that was, or not all of them at least, uh, follow those trends and use latest uh, possible resources, latest possible tools to, to, to develop uh, the product. And uh, by by doing those innovations, by uh, doing those sort of proof, proof of concepts, we are able to actually test out some possible uh, better solutions before we start the project, before we overcommit to something that, that is not viable. So we can test it out earlier, remove this from the production process, uh, which will save the clients uh, a lot. I'm pretty, pretty sure that, that any client that already worked on the project had a situation when they built some module and turned out that the, the choice of technology wasn't the best, that it could have been better. Uh, so we move this this process of this, this segment of discovering something is not fit or is fit 
to, to, to work earlier. Uh, and anything you discover earlier in development, it means it's much, much cheaper to, uh, to switch it, to fix it. Uh, so you can imagine that if, you know, from day one, you're starting with something that you are quite confident in, then you're a much better place than someone who just, well, let's use it and see how it goes. <laughs> Exactly. I think the additional value to that is that we are building products or services. We don't build code. We don't build designs. You will not get, as our customer, you will not get several parts. This is what why we started Product Challenges, to better collaborate. So it was also internal value for us to foster the collaboration between design and development and QAs and PMs and even non-production people in obtention. So we are also harvesting their knowledge and their experience. So basically, um, what I mean by product or service, with many software houses are there, with many vendors, you will get someone who will code the application based on the backlog and the features you require, but they will not build a product. And it's really hard for someone who is, for example, startup owner to think about product. They are thinking about idea. So we are taking part of the responsibility and we are leveraging our own expertise because we also build a product internally in obtention, uh, for example, our uh, team deck or our SAS boilerplate. So basically we are showing you how to build product that is successful on the market, not how to design or uh, not how to code. Basically, we are creating product for you and with you. And I think that, let's say, the idea, the high level value that stands behind Innovation Hub is basically about collaboration, about collaboration with our customers and about uh, showing our customer how to move on the very fast changing market. Like Patrick mentioned, every day I'm reading about new technologies, new advancement, AI is destroying everything, uh, you know, but basically if you are a step ahead, if you are working with someone who has the knowledge, you can be ahead of those trends and you don't have to be worried that AI is going to replace you or, for example, your competition will get the competitive edge because they will be just faster. Uh, in the, Right now, I think 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, it was safe to build in waterfall and something that remind scrum and agile methodologies right now with very fast changing market it's like every day something new you need to be able to build and fail and iterate and learn from that and if you are a startup owner if you are someone who is leading a pro project in enterprise company you don't have that time to fail and learn and we can uh, give you that time by the innovation hub so now I wonder what is uh, the internal value? What is the value proposition for our employees? Uh, okay, Patrick, I think you will uh, tackle this better as you represent more of our employees. <laughs> yes. Uh... Yeah, so, so the value for our employees um, is, uh, well, the multiple values, I would say, for, for our employees is, is one thing that, uh, as I mentioned before, um, each, each healthy service company, as like a software house, needs some, some uh, bench uh, to be able to be prepared for, for the next project to start it. Uh, but during this bench time, uh, people need to do something meaningful for them so, so they feel motivated. And uh, going through the innovation hub, uh, getting a product, a real life product that, that you can work on, something that makes sense, something that is in the latest technology, gives you this boost of, of motivation that I can try out something that I didn't have chance before. I won't have chance because I'm, I'm going to work on a project that has some, some fixed technology that, that I'm, I might not be able to, to impact too much. So, that, so that's one thing, right? I, I can try something that is very new, uh, something that I wanted to try, something that uh, I didn't get a chance before, uh, and now I can. Uh, the other thing is um, that since we're talking about product challenges uh, and being able to go through this whole process of figuring out the product, you get a chance to work on the whole thing, not just, you know, just coding or just designing or, uh, I mean, just is not <laughs> correct word for it, of course, but 
um, it allows you to work closer closely to other departments maybe you know if you're working on some fintech product to figure it out you need to collaborate with finances you need to collaborate maybe with office and uh, that gives you a lot of options to to talk to others to gather some requirements to learn doing that to learn some other branches of of uh, of business uh, than just the one that you uh well used to in your day-to-day -day work yeah, and when we are working with our bigger customers, uh, the main problem they are approaching us is silos. Our knowledge is in silos. We don't speak to each other. And basically, I think what Innovation Hub does perfectly, it makes people speak to each other. And, you know, with designers, for example, they are the colorful birds in any company sitting in the corner doing their magic and nobody considers them part of the development process. This is something that, uh, you know, is created way before we go into development. In Innovation Hub, product designer, developer, they are product experts. And you can see on the market, there's a shift. Mm, two years ago, we were talking about UX UI designers and we were talking about React native developers. We were talking about the domains and frameworks in our own knowledge area. But right now, we are looking like every good company is not looking for a designer or developer. We are looking for product experts. So we are looking for people who have deep knowledge in their domain, for example, design or coding but they understand the other domains. They have at least basic knowledge about how to solve problems in product areas, how to work with business goals. This is very important. And this is also something that we are learning inside of Innovation Hub. So it's not only design and coding. We are also learning how to take market into account how to take business goals of our customers, how to take our own business goals and strategy we have as a company as a factor in the product. So it's not something that, you know, business people are coming with or our customer is coming with. We are considering this when we are building features, when we are working on backlog, when we are working on designs in Figma, we are considering business, we are considering uh, users. And basically, um, also in Innovation Hub, it's all about people, our internal people and the people for whom we are creating the product. Everyone who works in product area, we want to do something that is meaningful. We want to impact the world. Maybe not change it, let not, let's not go that way, but at least impact the world in a positive way. So um, I think that what is the value in Innovation Hub, we have the space because if I'm working with customers and they are saying, or with other companies, they are saying we are user-centric. User what does it mean? And I'm asking, okay, you are user-centric. That's amazing. When did you speak last time to a user? Um, we don't speak to our users. So how can you be user-centric? And because why they are not user-centric? Because they think they don't have time. That research, that being innovative, that iterating takes a lot of time. And we are creating this space very consciously in attention to have that space to actually think. Uh, many uh, developers, many designers, many product experts are complaining that they don't have time to think about the product, that they need to code, they need to design one component after another. But basically, Innovation Hub, you have the time to think, to think about edge cases, to think how this is going to impact, how the user is going to use that product, how this is going to align with business goals. So I think this is also the additional value for our employees that they are growing as product experts and they are getting better at creating products and services, digital services, not only better at coding or designing. Could you provide us with an example of one of the Innovations Hub projects? Uh, okay, so I think one that was uh, very close to our hearts, uh, my and Patrick, um, we were um, discussing the areas or domains that are going to impact uh, our industry in the future. So, of course, AI, but there are others like that. And we were discussing which of those technologies uh, can be leveraged in the future. And this, this was like academic discussion. But basically, we ask people in the company to... Guys, don't think about AI. Don't think about, you know, how to leverage that technology on this technology. Think about problems. And people started to think about problems that they um, encounter. For example, customer service. Every one of us is dealing with customer service one way or another. 
we are uh, calling them, we are mailing them, we are waiting for reply, we are frustrated, and we are not happy with the actual product or services because of the customer service. And that was the problem, like actual problem that occurs in the nature. You can um, you can see that problem every day. And there are people who are trying to fix that problems. There are companies who are struggling to have better customer service. And then we thought, okay, so what's the problem? Let's explore the problem. So we explored why this is a problem. We gathered the data, we did some research, we did some desk research, we talked to people, we understood what is the actual problem. And the problem was workload, time, and prioritization. Prioritization of the incoming messages. So any customer service specialist has a lot of them, either mails or phones. They need to be sure which of those messages are crucial and which of them can be solved later. And those were the main areas that we discovered. And we were when we discovered that when we understood what is the actual problem, only then our amazing people from technology side, we're able to see that there are solutions that we can actually leverage some kind of technology. And I will left Patrick to describe this better. But basically, we were able to find the technology that solves that problem. We didn't find technology because it's fun and trendy. We found the problem first and then applied technology solution to solve it. True. Well, of course, we won't be going into all the details of the tech stack. Uh, but what's what's interesting is that that based on on this prototype, or actually, it's uh, we're building a, a product for for now internal product to to build a support for for our uh, internal office teams. So whenever someone asks a question, uh, there is a bot that is able to to answer this question at least help them in finding the answer to 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 uh, to this question. And uh, what comes out of it is that uh, since it's uh, even in the second prototype or second proof of concept uh, in the area of, of AI, generative AI, or utilizing um, uh, generative AI, uh, we are able to come up with a sort of uh, like framework or an architecture, usable architecture for future projects. Uh, that have similar uh, more similar uh, feature set. So imagine that you know wanting to have a WhatsApp bot for your business to to answer some some questions about your business or to schedule something. Uh, it turns out that building an architecture is completely different to a, a regular let's say SaaS like application. And uh, you need to figure this out during uh, regular development uh, while uh, us doing uh, second, third, fourth prototypes such as this one. We're able to uh, easily deploy this to, let's say, AWS and um, continue work based on those prototypes, just removing the domain knowledge and, and, uh, and knowing which vector database is better, let's say, whether we want to use Pinecom or ChromaDB. And we know that that we love lang chain so so that's also uh, uh something that that we use in our uh prototypes and uh, oh of course stop dropping knives right now because it's not <laughs> we're not supposed to talk about this but that's that's what's what's important that that we spend some time um uh, actual developers learned how to do it and uh clients uh, coming to us with uh commercial well, actually we did commercial projects already mm -hmm. and that's that's what's the, the, the beauty of it uh is when they come they they see we actually did it uh, we figure out some stuff and when we talk to them they they, they see we understand the problem they see that we're able to give them some some pointers some uh, something like this won't work or, or this will work uh, but let's change it a little bit because it's going to be even better uh so you won't be able to do it without testing the the tech without building this as a product right because it's easy to just test you know also some API, run some code here, script there, and well, I'm an expert now, of course. Uh, but if you get a problem and you need to solve it and you have a team of engineers to, to code it, then when they have a similar problem, and believe me, a lot of problems are very similar to each other, um, they already did that, or they already did a portion of it, which puts you like a mile ahead uh, than, than if you hadn't had that, right? Uh, um, um, yeah. Oh my God. I'm always amazed by um, the approach of of technical part of attention because 
we are not doing everything from scratch every time. Uh, every time you are building something, you're already thinking, okay, this is the architecture I can use somewhere yeah. and let's create something that is automated and something that can be repeatable because if something is repeatable, you can improve the process. So I'm always amazed how this works. Uh, I think this is the, that, that was the base for SaaS Boilerplate, our own product is also, right? The architecture that is repeatable and can help. Yeah, um, yeah, that's okay. that's I would say ingrained into into our bloodstreams and say because from very beginning for a number of years we, we went through five or six cycles of something similar to SaaS Pointer Plates that it's just a result of that. Uh seeing all those repeatable stuff, just you know, coded once, reuse it, uh make the developer experience uh, as as well the best as possible. Uh I would I wanted to say simple, but it's never simple in the end. <laughs> it's just uh you know, since we figure out some problems, why why figure it out again? So we are uh firm believers in, in any kind of reusable solutions, boilerplates. Uh, SaaS boilerplate you mentioned uh, is is our biggest one. We open source it on on GitHub, uh, and it's it's a full, full solution for for a SaaS like product uh, that can be deployed to AWS well right away. <laughs> yeah, and I think this is also the value in uh, Innovation Hub that we are finding in Innovation Hub. So basically, we can not only improve products for our customers. We can not only uh, discover new trends, but we can also improve our own internal processes. We were thinking how to improve our own research and development, and Innovation Hub was the space when we were thinking, okay, how to get really creative, innovative ideas, how to make sure that we are picking the right ideas. What I mean by right idea, the one that is aligned with business goals, the one that actually addresses a user problem, and the one that is possible to build with the technology or at least, at least create some space to explore that technology. So basically, Innovation Hub was also our way to improve that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Comparing our innovation hub to others on the market, what is the main difference? What is the main value proposition of Aptention Innovation Hub? Uh, okay, I would say that a lot of innovation hubs I know, um, they are created uh, top uh, top to bottom. So someone had idea, okay, we are not, someone at the top management had idea, we are not innovating enough, let's do something about it. But there's no culture of innovation, there's no culture of product, and those innovations hubs are failing because they, for example, if this is a big enterprise, in enterprise companies, everything takes more time. It takes more time because there are procedures and processes that needs to be observed. So if you are creating in that culture, in that regulated culture, if you are creating innovation hub there, you are doomed to fail. You are doomed to create something that's going to be like the rest of the company. And that's not only about enterprises, that's also about software houses, because some of them are creating innovation hub because this is a business value, because this will get us customers. I think what is unique about the uh, innovation hub, and this is why I love this idea so much, we created the innovation hub from the needs of our employees. We were talking how to create something meaningful, how to collaborate, how to exchange knowledge. We noticed that for example, our developers are talking about some new technology, but our designers want to know that, but they don't have time, they don't have space to actually learn about it. So how to fix that? How to fix the problem that our HR people are not sure what is the current latest trends on the market and which, uh, let's say, um, which people they should put in the pipeline to be able to recruit them faster than others. And this space was created by people. It was created by people who want to collaborate, who want to innovate, who want to share the knowledge. They think that Innovation Hub grew from the bottom up, from the need of the people and our personal need, mine and Patrick, to actually exchange knowledge and talk. Uh, we have a very nice discussions from time to time about different areas of, of our industry. And I think this is how it grew. And uh, this is uh, this is what makes us different from the competition, that we actually created this because we had a need and this is our value, our culture, that we are uh, innovators and we are people who are looking always for more. Because you can settle at less, 
but why do this? Like life is very short. Why settle for less if you can do more and better and and you know share this with others? Mm -hmm. uh, and I also to to add a little bit to what Alex said about you know going top to bottom, uh, we kind of inverted the the whole thing, the whole process, because um, we all also noticed that it's often the case that uh, when you have some free resources, then you start looking, oh, what what do we give them? Oh, what they should do in order, you know, to to not waste money. Let, let's just give them some internal project that we, we notice that it's it's often happening in in various uh, workplaces. Is that we inv inverted this into uh, we constantly figure out we constantly try to um, to build better product ideas. And when the team uh, uh, is is available, that's when we start. So we have a backlog of ideas that you know we want to start a couple of things. Uh, and as long as as soon as as a team is available, we can start working on it. They get bo booking and they can can finish it. Uh, but also, it all shows shows some 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 better thing is that when we have a great idea, uh, we find the team. Uh, so the team that could be working on a commercial project is actually assigned to this because we find uh, enough value in, in in this innovation to even invest money to this that that this is a better thing to to do. Uh, so things that that usually I would say are not happening. Uh, that that that. It's very difficult to decide on something to invest in if you don't gather enough information, you don't have a valid business plan, really, because that, that, that is sort of a business plan uh, to to uh, work on, on this uh, tech, on this innovation. Uh, and uh, if you constantly are building something like this, if you constantly think about it, if you constantly gather people from various departments to work on it, that's when you get a refined idea, a refined business plan. And that's when actually people, stakeholders, people who call decisions can uh, decide that let's invest into that because that makes sense. Uh, it's very difficult to do it if you don't uh, cultivate a culture like this. Definitely. I must tell from my own perspective that uh, comparing my experience with working with other companies, it is definitely huge value to use all internal knowledge. So not only focus on delivery teams and our um, teams that specialize in, in doing external clients work, but also taking into consideration the internal teams like my own marketing one, office department, and taking all the knowledge we have inside to create as good as possible uh, projects and products at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember a very successful product challenge um, won by a marketing team. And, you know, this is the perspectives. I think this is also additional value, different perspectives. Because with um, development teams and design teams and QA teams, we have our mindset. We know how to work. And sometimes uh, someone coming from outside is breaking that cycle. It's telling us, but why you are doing this this way? And this, there's a routine of how we are working. And someone else with fresh eye, set of eyes and someone with very different perspective on users, different perspective of business can help us create better products and reach our own knowledge, our own experience. So we are not only mm, saying talk to your customers, talk to everyone, talk to your own employees, because people from different departments have amazing knowledge you can leverage. For example, if we are creating products for our customer, and yes, we can build a code. Yes, we can create amazing designs that are going to be very uh, based on behavioral psychology and emotions. That's possible, we can do this. But how to make this product sellable? How to create for our customer a product that is going to create a company that is product-led growth company? How can we help in that area? It's not something that can be solved by developers, not something that can be solved by designers alone. But if we combine this with the knowledge we have internally in the company, we can help our customers not only create product MVP however we will call that, but we can also help our customer get on the market and stay on the market. This is also a value, customers that stay on the market because we created something amazing with them. And I would say that there is yet another thing, I would say like the other side of it, 
uh, is that uh, by joining people from different departments that can work on products uh, together, it also means that people from uh, you know like internal departments are able to see how the whole development process looks like uh, because well. It's obvious usually for, for production people to know how products are built. That's what they do. That's their business as usual. Uh, but in order to be better at marketing, be better at sales, right? Be better at supporting people from HR. When you understand how they build, how their day-to-day work looks like and how, uh, you know, how to f- make it better, uh, uh, that that's when, when they they understand the, that's how they can support better that's how can they can sell better because if they understand fully the services that they are selling for example talking about sales uh, then uh, well they know what they're talking about right they, they're not selling something that is somewhere there someone t- 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 told them about this they felt it they took part of it they built the product right so uh, that is a huge value uh, for for me at least uh, I, I see i see results uh, well, quite quickly yeah exactly and it's so easy to estimate projects because now they understand why something takes so much time and there's like an ongoing conversation because of that so yeah definitely this is this is added value and they also can help our customers um because sales people need to be a partner for our customer it's not only about selling a service it's also asking the right question to know um what's the problem what kind of problem you need to solve so basically if they see those problems if they struggle themselves to build a product as uh, sales people are better at advising our customers i think how does the Innovation Hub ensure that its participants are up to date with the latest advancements and best practices? Oh, I mean, it's a it's a core value, I would say, the whole thing. Uh, I mean, it's a buzzword, of course, but uh, what it means that uh, we're talking about any product that we are supposed to build. Uh, one of the requirements is usually that let's use something new uh, or, or let's use this vertical and connect it to this new technology. And, and that's a, like a basis. And on top of that, the whole product is also built, the whole proof of concept is built. So we always uh, make sure to select something that is new, something that is fresh, uh, but also comes from, from employees themselves, from people who participate in product challenges. They also come in with this mind that they are supposed to and they want to test something that they weren't uh, able before. Uh, one of our metrics is, is uh, how many new skills have been acquired uh, during the, the whole process. Uh, so, so we even check for that, whether, you know, the um, one of the estimation or one of the scores that we give to the whole idea, whether we do it or not, is this uh, potential for learning, for getting some new skills or upskilling something that is uh, has just been tested by us recently. So, you know, like continuing the same trend that has been done in the previous proof of concept. Uh, uh, and uh, I would say that that's uh, the, the core I- idea behind the innovation lab. That's what started. Like we wanted to, uh, let's say, uh, start a generative AI uh, projects, commercial projects. How do we do that? We need to get experience first. Uh, so we go to Innovation Hub, we grab an idea which made sense, connect it to Generative AI, create product challenge, uh, get product, develop it, um, and uh, market it and so on. Yeah, and basically it's, um, I think the advantage that we have, we are not creating new technologies. We are just focusing on the actual problems and you cannot imagine how many companies are not thinking about it. There are problems on the market that are not yet solved, but uh, a lot of companies are like, oh, AI, what can I do with AI? And there's no actual problem. There's no users behind it because people are buying digital products and they are using digital products because either they have a problem that they need to fix with this solution or they have a frustration that is keeping them from being their best selves or they have like a prestige needs. That's also a reason. But basically, there needs to be a human need in the background, human problem to solve in the background. So I think that the value in Innovation Hub is that we are starting from that problem 
and then we are applying technology and this way we can uh, basically um, explore any idea any uh, trend because be, before it becomes a trend because we stumble upon a problem we solve that problem and then we know like five years later someone finally made it a trend but we already been there we've done that we had a commercial um, project to show it as a badge of honor and i think that um when we are talking about how it starts and how we are staying ahead of, of the competition and how this innovation hub is helping us, I think we also need to talk about the end process. So basically, when we already have proof of concept, we are giving a head start to our customers because there's already proof of concept. We already explored if this is feasible. We already explored if this is viable from the business perspective. And we already explored if there's a need, if there's a desire on the market for this kind of solution from the users, because the users are the ultimate goal. You need people who will pay for your product. You need people who will create revenue for you. And it doesn't matter if this is a B2C or B2B area. In B2B area, yes, there's a different specific, but basically you have employees that are going to use that solution. So still there needs to be a need to fulfill or a problem to solve for regular human beings using technology. So I'm thinking like the end game of Innovation Hub uh, is first of all, our growing our own culture, having fun because you know fun is important i will uh, i will elaborate on that a little bit because a lot of people are thinking like we need to be very serious and we need to be very controlled and professional but this is not the environment for innovation in innovation you need to be chilled you need to be open-minded you need to have the space to fail and learn from that failure and you need to have fun and basically, when you are trying to be very serious and professional, you're trying to control everything. In micromanagement, in innovation doesn't work. You need to create the space for people to think, to sit, to have fun. And from those conversations, you will get the best ideas. You will get the most innovative ideas. You will get the ideas that people will be internally motivated to fulfill and see them uh, created uh, in a product because it's going to be their internal motivation. It came from a good place. It came from the place when we are having fun together, collaborating together. And we are trying to extend that culture uh, to our customers. So we are very professional. Uh, our NPS is amazing. Our CSAT is 100%. Our customers are happy. So we are professionals. We can be serious, but we also find very mean, in very meaningful way and conscious way, we are finding a space and time to be uh, not so serious, to have fun, to actually open our minds for different possibilities. Because when you are innovative, you cannot go for the first solution that pops to your mind, because the probably the first solution that pops to your mind is something you already know, something you already saw on the market. So how to get those ideas that are not there yet on the market, how to make people think in a way that's going to reinvent something or going to create whole new way of, of solving that problem. So basically fun is is important part. And uh, sorry about the, the digression, digression here, coming back, basically I'm thinking that um, Innovation Hub helps us stay ahead of trends. It also helps our customer to stay ahead of trends because we already have proof of concept that our customers can use. That can that they can come to us and say, okay, I like your proof of concept. This is a similar idea. This is my own spin on this idea. Can you do it? And we know we can do it. We have a proof uh, to, to show the customers and ourselves. Okay, so we have inspired employees, real life problems and trending technologies. How do we ensure long-term growth and success? And how do we measure the impact? I think uh, I will go with the external. Maybe, Patrick, you can go with the internals. I think the external ones, first of all, is a shorter time to market. It's really important right now when the life cycle of a product is like six months from the moment someone has the need, they expect in six months to have something that will fix that need or they will move to the competition. So basically it's getting shorter and shorter. So I think that, um, I'm lost, I'm sorry. I thought about something. Uh, can you remind me the question, please? I will start over. 
Sure. So, uh, how does the innovation hub measure the impact of oh, the yeah. measurements? Yes, uh, yes, metrics. So, I think the biggest metric and the most important metric is time to market. The other metric is that uh, shortening the time to market for our customers, of course. The other metric is that this is something that was already done. And we can measure how it works. We can measure the performance. We can already we already have some data to to show. Uh, basically, uh, I think we can also talk about the uh, ability to adapt new technologies and be able to create uh, a robust portfolio of uh, frameworks and technologies that we are working for for our customers. And uh, one more external one, uh, I think um, what we are seeing is the growing number of customers that are not seeing us as a vendor that needs to do the job, but they are seeing us as a partner and we want to work with them that way. We want to collaborate with them. We want to have them on our calls and on our brainstorms and on our ideation sessions. Why? Because it's just faster and it, it's, um, you know, the feedback loop you are getting in the usual way. You are doing your designs or code you are showing this to customer, waiting a few days for a feedback, then you are applying the improvements, and then again you are waiting for feedback. It's just too much time, but if the customer is with us on workshops, on ideation sessions, uh, during um, scrum ceremonies, some of them of course, and uh, this is where the customer has actual impact. So we don't have this situation that this is from my actual experience when I had a customer who told me that they were working with another company for nine months, they didn't see anything. So they met in the beginning, there was a scope requirements and they met after nine months and the solution that they paid for it was really expensive one but it didn't fit their brief it was not aligned with their business goals it was not something that will help them grow the revenue so basically i think the collaborative metrics and how many uh, people are collaborating with us how many customers are willing to work this way and get the benefits of working this way this is also huge huge metrics for us Passage. Yeah, and, and internally we also have a couple of metrics to to see how to check whether the the whole process uh, gives us the value that we expected. And and one of the metrics, of course, uh, the satisfaction of employees with the whole process, uh, and uh, the whole satisfaction uh, of uh, company uh, employees how how it prices. Because one of the uh, major things that that is coming out from our employees, I would say, or most of the employees all over the world, is the uh, the ability to grow, uh, to learn new things. Uh, so I would say that that's that's pretty easy to 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 measure and set metrics. How many, uh, how much do we want to take out of it? Uh, the second is is a metric that that, that I mentioned before, uh, which is uh, we decide uh, on a technology and uh, measure how many people actually got uh, an, an amount of knowledge that we predefined uh, with a couple of levels like shallow intermediate and experts knowledge and uh, we define on which level how many people uh, would need to learn something in a set amount of time so that is yet another measure to uh, to see the success of, of innovation hub um, because that's the, the end goal, uh, one of the end goals, is that we want to have X amount of engineers knowing this technology and being able to start a commercial project, uh, because we don't want to start a commercial project with someone who doesn't know anything about this uh, this tech, uh, and this such situation would refuse to, to work on a project. Uh, the other thing is that we also, well, from marketing side, we also measure uh, the impressions or the number of views uh, the impact uh, of the case studies uh, because each of the uh, prototypes that ends or the whole process of innovation hub ends with us talking about this so producing content we want uh, others to learn that we worked on it that we did it uh, we want to say how we did it, what we learned from it, and uh, well, one of the uh, measures is, is well, you know best, <laughs> uh, related to marketing, uh, and uh, that's that's another measure that, that we have. Yes, and spoiler alert, the podcast is kicking off an innovation series, so stay tuned and follow us on social media.
Now, regarding future plans, my next question is, what is the long-term vision for the Innovation Hub? Um, the future growth, uh, I would say, would be quite linear scalable, uh, scaling of, of the teams to have constant uh, at least two prototypes working on it uh, at the same time. Uh, and um, maybe Alex. <laughs> <I'll stop laughs> to, so. Yeah, I think that um, this is like something that we started and this is uh, something that we... Um, we hope and we want to continue, but we want to. We don't want to stop at this point. Like Patrick said, it's not about having small team from time to time on bench doing something, but to have a constant process, constant process in which um, people are working to solve another and yet another problem, and we are generating a lot of ideas because this is active way of getting customers it's not like waiting for the customer to come to us with solution it's our job to actually see the problems in the market see the problem in verticals in domains and coming to our customers with proof of concept and solution and telling them uh, listen guys this is what we observe on the market this is the problem currently this is how competition is handling this and they are not doing the great job this is the solution that we have let's talk about implementing this solution with you and basically this is active way of selling and i think from my um, perspective and from the perspective of what i'm seeing on the market this is the future this is the future not waiting for the customer but basically working uh, ahead or working with the customer to solve something. So I think this is, uh, this is also the future. My idea or my big dream for this is to get more people on board, more people um, constantly working together. But it's not only about the quantity, it's also about getting maybe people from uh, different companies working with us. So it's not only about our success as attention, it's about success of our industry, how we can build something better. So um, as, as as you know, and that was also your idea, Hania, you, this is also a spoiler alert, only for those who are listening to this, uh, this recording, this podcast. And basically we want to open product challenges to general public. So if you are a startup owner, if you are someone who is creative, if you are someone who sees a problem on the market, you will be able to join us in a product challenge with your idea. We'll pick the best ideas together and we'll work on those ideas and we'll create proof of concept out of those ideas so this is also something that the future holds for us and i just guys i'm so excited about this one because we already had fun internally we already created um, several um, prototypes and ideas and product challenges and right now we'll be celebrating our product challenges um, shortly in the form of hackathon internal hackathon but basically before that we already had fun inside the company i would love to see people joining from outside with different perspectives different ideas and we can use those frameworks like design thinking and other frameworks we have uh, from the design perspective uh, from the let's say workshop perspective also collaborative uh, way of working agile way of working we can um, use those uh, those uh, frameworks to actually work together and create something awesome and show the world how much innovation can change approach that actually you don't need um, you don't need to be big company, big consulting company who has innovation hub. Even in small companies, even in startups, even in software houses, you can create space for collaboration and, and innovation. So that's my big dream to actually uh, have others joining us and doing those challenges, maybe with other companies also, like other companies on the market, other software houses, maybe we can uh, create a joint challenge and have fun together. Sure. That's a, another big vision for the whole company is to start building product products like more products on our, on our own. Uh, so so I'd see that innovation hub in the future would turn into a little incubator of uh, not stopping just on on a proof of concept on producing marketing content, but also the ones that that show potential, the ones that that show proof that they actually uh, there is need for for them on the market to continue them into real products uh, so that would be my big vision for for innovation hub oh yeah 
Definitely. I'm excited as well. I, I must tell it is also combined with uh, our um, values. So uh, sharing the knowledge we have, uh, helping the community and uh, basically dedication to innovation. So um, in few words, basically, we want to help our industry grow. We don't want to keep our knowledge inside the company. We want to share. We, as Aptention, also started as a startup, so we know the hustle. Uh, that's why um, we would like to help others. Uh, however, I feel that there might be a question about um, how does the Innovation Hub handle issues related to uh, protecting uh, external people's intellectual property that's a big topic and this is a topic that we want to figure it out together this is why we created one of the reasons of course we created our discord community is to gather people who are working in this industry and they are uh, coming in contact with those kind of challenges because we are huge believers in keeping uh, intellectual property rights with the inventor with the person who came up with the idea so how we handle this internally right now um, we are coming up with the ideas then we are doing the product challenge then we are doing the proof of concept and if we are seeing that there's a potential for a product the innovator the person who came up with the idea can work with uh, with our company and this can be another startup that we are starting something internally we'll see but basically um with um intellectual property th this is going to be my personal opinion but ideas are cheap in our industry like many people are thinking oh my god i will not share my idea mm -hmm. because someone will steal it nobody is going to steal your idea because probably uh, 30 other people around the planet are working exactly on the same idea if you are lucky if you are unlucky 3000 people are working on the same ideas so ideas are really cheap you can come up with ideas easily and uh, you can sit with chat gpt for 20 minutes and you can generate this many ideas and most of them will be just fine but basically uh, ideas are cheap but the execution this is something that makes the difference can you execute on your idea can you actually see if this idea is valid can you test this idea can you make experimentations to make sure to validate the hypothesis that you have can you actually do it because even if this is valid idea and even if this valid idea have people on the market who want to buy it can you deliver and this is, I think, the value. So we can talk about any ideas and those ideas can be then um, improved by others and uh, enriched by others. But this is, I think that the value lies not in the idea, the value lies in execution. So I'm pretty safe about having fun with others on some ideas because like I said, ideas are cheap, but basically the execution, this is something that needs to be um, formal, let's say. Sure, but in case of clients that who come to us, they want to uh, run through the idea, something that they already figured out as a service from us, then of course that's when when they retain all of the <laughs> rights to 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 the idea since they are sponsoring and paying for for the whole innovation. Yeah. And my very last but not least question is: In a few words, what does innovation mean to you? Oh, I love the question. Um, it's a I very think... ambiguous yeah? question. <laughs> There's very many, many answers. Uh... Yeah, definitely. And this is a question that I think touches a core of a personality. So for me, innovation means I never stop. Innovation means I'm I can be curious, and I'm really a curious person. Uh, I like to know more. So for me, looking for the knowledge and applying the knowledge, this is something that I'm missing in, in academic setting. You are gathering a lot of knowledge, but what about the application? This is why I love IT, because you can get the academic knowledge, you can do research, and you can basically implement it in real life solution, practical solutions. So for me, innovation means being able to be curious, being able to work with others, and being able not to stop or settle for less, but actually push for more. I would say that's my value in innovation. Oh, and, and to me, since I'm a well, tech guy, uh, 
I would say it's just, you know, taking a technology, something either that is emerging or already exists and, and applying it in a new way. Uh, so, uh, because there are multiple uh, proofs of or, or, or examples of uh, the same products, same idea being iterated upon and tried from di different perspectives and different ways with different technologies and achieving different results, right? So you can take the same problem, the same thing that already someone has figured out many years ago, but you have something new available to you today and apply this, this new thing and get com something completely different, something better, something uh, maybe uh, directed towards some, some other audience. And that's that's innovation for me. That's taking something uh, um, that is well, maybe someone hasn't thought of it before, and and applying it to something uh, to well to build something, some some product, to build some service, something that makes sense to to others, something that well, either can make money or just make someone's life easier. Beautifully said. Thank you so much <laughs> for the interview. Thank you very much as well. Thank you. That was a pleasure.